Um, now let's hear about the European Commission's priorities for the next legislative period. We are now joined by Olivier Mikul from the European Commission. He will share the Commission's priorities in data protection for the upcoming legislative period, focusing on GDPR insights. Mr. Mikul, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your very kind invitation, and I hope you hear me well. Yes, we do. Um, so, um, in fact, I understand that you had already um, an intervention by uh, Commissioner Renders earlier uh, uh, this morning. Um, and indeed, uh, uh, in his uh, address to you, uh, he, he already highlighted uh, some way uh, forward. Uh, and indeed, we are now at a, a time where the new uh, Commission is uh, being uh, put in place. There will be the, the hearings uh, very soon by the European Parliament of the various uh, commissioners. We already have uh, uh, the um, uh, instruction given by uh, President uh, von der Leyen in the mission letters addressed to the various commissioners. So uh, we have already a very clear, uh, let's say, way forward. Um, on the specific issue of data protection, um, what is very important is that uh, we have carried out this um, assessment of the uh, implementation of the application of GDPR um, after a very comprehensive uh, exercise involving the, uh, the member states, the data protection authorities, the stakeholders uh, through our multi-stakeholder group uh, gathering uh, uh, um, the, the, the most important European uh, business federations, civil societies. We had a call for, for evidence to which uh, Bitcom uh, uh, provided extremely useful uh, uh, input. And uh, I guess that you have seen that in the Commission uh, uh, assessment, a lot of the elements highlighted by uh, Bitcom members have been uh, uh, reflected. So in July, we published this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, report. And uh, many of the elements as well that we have uh, highlighted there have been also reflected, echoed in the report by Mr. Draghi that you might have uh, seen as well, uh, especially the issue of consistency and the fight against uh, uh, fragmentation. So what do we, what are the main elements that we highlight in this uh, report and uh, to guide or the Commission future action on, on data protection? Um, first of all, that we conclude that the principles in the, uh, uh, in the GDPR um, and the rules that are uh, put in place are fit for purpose. I, I don't think that there was uh, any request um, uh, uh, for fundamental change of the, of the rules uh, and the principle, the legal base, which, by the way, were those already included in the 1995 uh, 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 directive. Huh? So we have been living with them for quite some time now. Um, the uh, business side and the uh, operators have uh, adjusted to these rules, invested to meet uh, uh, the requirements. So the idea was not to change or to impose a drastic change uh, for the um, uh, GDPR data protection rules. Uh, we keep the risk-based approach. We keep the six legal bases with uh, the rights of the of the individuals are, are, are the one again that existed also uh, uh, since the directive in 1995 and i think we we this uh, there is no intention to uh, drastically change uh, uh, this uh, these rules but what is very important and i think it was mentioned uh, earlier uh, uh, today it's a, it's a focus on proper enforcement and uh, consistency. And this is also something that uh, Commissioner Renders uh, uh, highlighted. Uh, this is also included in the mission letter addressed 
to the new commissioner in charge of data protection. Uh, uh, as you may know, the, the commissioner designate is Commissioner McGrath, and indeed in his uh, mission letter sent by uh, President von der Leyen, there is a focus on this um, enforcement. Um, what is very important is the consistent interpretation of the rules by the data protection uh, uh, authorities, and I think it was highlighted by the Bavarian Data Protection Authority in the previous uh, uh, panel. Um, of course, in Germany, and uh, uh, there is a, a specific situation where you have uh, uh, lender uh, data protection authorities and federal uh, and the federal one. So um, uh, we sometimes say as a as a kind of joke that you have more data protection authorities in Germany than in the whole of the EU uh, in the rest of the of the member states. Because besides this data protection authority for uh, uh, general uh, rules, you have. Uh, 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 one for the uh, 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 um, uh, broadcasting industry, you have uh, some for churches, etc. So there is a bit of a specific situation in, uh, in Germany, which makes the issue of consistency even more acute in this, um, uh, in this context. Um, the question of consistency is a very important one because too often we hear the narrative, especially from um, small organizations, that uh, GDPR is a burden, that there are uh, heavy reporting requirements, etc. But there are no reporting requirements under the, the, the GDPR. The only reporting requirement which exists is when there is a data breach where you have, under certain conditions, as you know well, uh, have to report to your data protection authority and to the data subject uh, if the, the breach is very significant, etc. But there is always this narrative coming back on heavy requirement reporting and so on. And it, when we discuss, and this we spend a lot of time discussing with the industry, with Chamber of Commerce, Regional Chamber of Commerce, it often boils down to the question of consistency. Do we get um, the right advice, the right uh, support? Um, and uh, what is uh, also striking is that the um, feedback or the uh, uh, impression we, 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 we get when we talk with different business communities is that um, uh, the same issues are not raised in all member states. For instance, we have very, much fewer complaints uh, from SMEs in other member states that sometimes we hear from some lender in, uh, uh, in Germany. So here, it's, it's very important to have this consistent approach, reassuring the GDPR is not, uh, is also about data flows. It is not about uh, uh, um, going after small SMEs who do not have uh, the uh, processing of data as their core business. Of course, there is the uh, risk-based approach. Of course, uh, an SME's uh, an SME who uh, has not at its main um, uh, business the uh, uh, processing of, uh, of, of data has less, um, let's say, uh, requirement than uh, a big tech companies wh which, whose business model is based on the processing of data. But it doesn't mean that we can exclude SMEs from the application of the GDPR because you have also biotech uh, uh, companies who are very small companies handling uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, biotech data. And of course, then uh, the GDPR applies and there are very strict requirements because these are health data, these are uh, special categories of data. So the discussion is not about SMEs versus big companies. The issue is about the risk. And uh, I think it is very important to keep that in mind and to have a consistent approach throughout the EU as regard uh, uh, this issue. Uh, uh, an important point um, uh, uh, also about this consistent enforcement, and this is more this time about cross-border uh, uh, cases and more about uh, 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 larger company, 
um, as a commission, we proposed uh, uh, in 2023 uh, a proposal for GDPR procedural rules. And here again, the idea is to foster uh, more consensus at an early stage in the investigation between the different uh, data protection authorities, so the lead data protection authority and the concerned data protection authorities. And here again, we are grateful for uh, Bitcom um, two waves of comments, uh, in fact, uh, regarding this uh, draft uh, uh, regulation, the last one. Uh, being, uh, I think, just before the the, the summer on the uh, parliament position. Um, and uh, uh, here again, I mean, the idea is really about consensus, about guaranteeing the, the rights of the parties and their investigation, also to foster solution uh, like amicable settlements uh, or preliminary vetting. You have different words to qualify it in different member states, but, uh, you know, sometimes solution can be found without launching a full-fledged investigation. And this is to the benefit of the complainant. This is also to the benefit of the parties under investigation. You can quickly, um, in fact, uh, 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 find a, a solution. So this is something we always advocated. So this consistency of enforcement, the, the second pillar I think we highlight in the report is the support to stakeholders. Uh, and this is, we welcome that in uh, their strategy, the European Data Protection Board, so gathering all data protection authority, highlighted uh, that as uh, one of their uh, priorities, especially the small uh, uh, companies, the small organizations, um, as you might know, as a commission, we have been supporting data protection authorities to reach out to SMEs to develop templates, to develop guides, to develop very practical uh, tool. Now, uh, the European Data Protection Board has gathered all this element into what they call this uh, guide for SMEs, translated into all uh, EU languages. Um, and we think it's a, it's a very important element to um, fight this belief, you know, that, yes, I mean, GDPR is making life uh, impossible for, 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 for small uh, uh, organizations. Um, again, there are practical solutions uh, uh, recognized. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, still, in support of the, of the stakeholders, very importantly, are the guidelines. So we very much welcome the work of the Data Protection Authority in this field. It's a lot of investment also on their side. But what is very important is that these guidelines are actionable, are a practical tool. Um, and uh, uh, um, uh, we, we very much welcome that there are these public consultation on these uh, guidelines. Probably there should be an even bigger engagement with stakeholders there. What is very important, and you might have seen yesterday, that the board has adopted uh, a draft guidelines on legitimate interest, for instance, which is a key issue. Um, following the court uh, ruling saying that commercial purposes can be uh, legitimate interest. As you might know, there had been a, some in some member states certain interpretation that it was not the case, and the Commission had intervened, and that at that time we were told uh, that, uh, 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 you know, we should not really make our view known, but this we had said and we are pleased that the court has confirmed uh, this approach and now there is a public consultation ongoing until 20th of november and i encourage the bitcoin members to contribute uh, to that um, so the involvement of uh, of uh, of uh, stakeholders um, and of course the data protection authorities they need resources uh, here it is a very important uh, also element to be able to provide the advice to the data protection authorities. I just would like to point out that in Germany, there are roughly 1,100 full-time equivalent working in the da different data protection authorities. If I compare that to uh, France, Italy, Spain, this is around four times, uh, three to four times bigger. So you, you, the, the, the resources um, uh, um, are there. Of course, there are the issue and this I fully understand the various regional DPA, that uh, it's split between a lot of entities. 
But in globally, in full-time equivalent, you have three to four times more uh, uh, staff in the uh, German DPAs that you have in France, Italy, or Spain, for instance. Um, the cooperation between the regulator is the third uh, element I would like to highlight. After consistency, the support to the stakeholder, the cooperation between the regulators, uh, you have uh, uh, several new data, data uh, digital uh, uh, legislation, uh, the D DMA, DSA, AI Act, Data Act, uh, Data Governance Act, etc. Also competition, uh, consumer law. So it's essential um, to foster this uh, uh, consistency between the action of the regulators. Uh, GDPR is a cornerstone for all this digital legislation. All this legislation have a different objectives than data protection. There are market contestability for the DMA. Um, you have, of course, the AI Act for AI models. So they are not meant to contradict or to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, overlap with the GDPR. But what, what is very important is the uh, uh, consistency. And you might have questions on, on, on that, but I can mention, for instance, on the PAYOK model, there is currently discussion uh, at the EDPB. The colleague mentioned that there is an event on 18 of November for the guidelines. It's also discussed in the field of the DMA and also by consumer uh, 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 authority, and they discuss between each other. And I see that I have to close very quickly. Just wanted to highlight two things. First of all, that you have specific issue um, that we need also to look at, children age verification. This is something on which we are working also with the Commission and the board and the Data Protection Authority, the, and the, uh, also Data Protection in Scientific Research. So I will conclude here saying, um, yes, um, uh, we have a very clear path on us, which is making all this digital legislation work together with the GDPR that probably um, when you um, yourself, you go to authorities and speak about the GDPR, I think it's very important to pinpoint the specific issue you, deal, uh, you are confronted with, not criticizing the GDPR as a whole, because I don't think it would make a lot of sense to reopen the rules, but really to uh, try to address in a very practical manner the uh, specific issue. And I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mikol, for these valuable insights.